Hello, good, afterno good afternoon, how are you? So, I have to leave this room a little bit up. I know that it's 6 p.m. You're tired about so many days of hackathons and sessions in which we've been learning a lot. So, probably I will ask you to participate in my presentation, okay? Because I don't want you to fall asleep. So, I'm here to talk about lack of information, disinformation. And so Someone may say to me, why aren't you calling this fake news, which is sexier? Well, I don't want to talk about fake news, but and I will explain it to you later. I'm a journalist. They've been showing to me things that you are doing in CyberCamp, and I'm going to be honest. I don't understand half of them. But what I know is this. I understand about fact-checking or verification or journalists uh, or real journalists, which is what we are doing in maldita.es. And I also understand about fake news and lack of information. Misinformation. I never talk about fake news unless I make a mistake. Why? Because in Maldita, no, it's not because in Maldita we've decided that we are not going to use fake news. We don't want to use fake news because it doesn't mean the same thing for everyone. When Trump says that don't, the CNN are fake news, it's not the same thing as when I'm saying that a new is fake. In fact, politicians are starting uh, using fake news in order to attack journalists, uh, journalism that they don't like. This happens in the US with Donald Trump, but also in Spain when conversations between Villarejo and the ministry, the minister of uh, justice came up, the ministry said that these were fake, fake news when Pablo Casado said that the uh, minimum wage uh, should be uh, reduced. And afterwards, he said that he never said that. He also said that journalists that said that he had said that were doing fake news. Second reason why we are not using fake news, when we are thinking about something which is a fake news, we usually think about these things that seem like new because they have a headline, a picture, a text. I mean, it, this seems like it's been published by a communication media. And most of information that we consume that is sent to our phones by our cousins, friends, etc., is more related to these fake tweets, audios, memes, Facebook posts. It is wider, the, the scenario is wider, and it is better defined when talking about misinformation. And also, a third reason uh, I the third reason I don't use the word fake news is that we are in a battle against the misinformation. And I think that in battles, everything is important. Words, words too, I don't want to say that call a new something that has never been news. I don't want to call a communication media something that is in charge or only uh, specializes in spreading fake news or misinformation. This is why I talk about uh, misinformation. But you may ask, misinformation has always been there. How many of you know about the story about Ricky Martin, the dog and the jelly? Uh, are there really people that, that haven't heard about this? Do I have to explain it? Okay, so, well, this is um, something, this is a hoax that, uh, every, that uh, appeared on Spain, Sorpresa, Sorpresa, a TV show. Uh, was part of this, and uh, in bars, families, friends started talking about this hoax. It was said that late at night a girl was going to be surprised by Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin was hidden in her closet. The girl entered into her room to have a snack with a, a, a jar of jelly, and her dog and cameras were there recording a very intimate moment between the girl, the dog, and the jelly. And Ricky Martin wasn't able to surprise the girl. This story was so spread 
spread it that there was even a, um, some a legal process that uh, was open. And it also, Antena 3 started offering a reward to anyone that could prove that this story really existed. Concha Velasco went on TV in order to say that this was not true. So many people have been talking about this TV show for these days, but not because, not for the reasons that we wanted to. We've been attacked. We've been attacked. We've been suffering a hoax. This attack involved talking about something that, that never happened with people that never existed. Many people have been talking about this, and if you allow me, I just want to say three words. Everything is a lie. Everything is a lie, but this was a hoax that was uh, widely spread. And even nowadays, I still find people that think that this happened. This never happened. So misinformation already existed 15 years ago. But things have changed because 15 years ago, misinformation was done by people with power, the charts, uh, economic elites, uh, political parties. But nowadays, anyone can be part of this information. And the fact of uh, anyone starting a hoax and spreading a hoax, together with many other things, has, cre has created this uh, scenario of misinformation, this battle that I mentioned in the beginning. Also, the media have lost credibility because journalists have done a wrong job during the crisis, but also for these years, journalism has lost some capabilities. For example, many professionals uh, stopped working in journalism. Also, the business model of journalism is not working anymore. Before, you could st be working in a newspaper, radio, or TV, and advertisement was well paid. Now, many of us are digital media, and adverti the advertisement companies do not pay that well, and you have to add more ads, journalists are worse paid, and you have less journalists, so we have less professionals creating more content. So this is why sometimes the content is worse. And in this crazy business model in which media are living, you need to be the first one to publish something in order to be the first media on Google and in order to receive the higher number, the highest number of clicks. But being the first doesn't always mean being the best. Sometimes a newspaper publishes a hoax a hoax, and the rest of the media publish the same hoax because nobody tried to uh, check that information. It is true that information has democratized, and this means that we can read 70 newspapers every day, and we can inform through different ways, And but also information has democratized. Now anyone can write a tweet that can become viral, and it turns into news. Now there are other cons consumption pattern turns. These data are from uh, Reuters Institute Digital News Report, and they say that 85% of Spanish people con consume information through digital media, 64% through their mobile phones, and 36% consume information through WhatsApp. And this is generating many problems that are related to this misinformation issue. So before, when we uh, had any, when we watched the news or when we read a newspaper, we knew that we were going to watch or to consume information. Now, information is always with us. This is what I like to call the anchor. Every six minutes, we have an alert that says that someone has sent a link from a so-called newspaper or an alert from a media says that there is last-minute news about something. But when we are consuming on our cell phone, 
on this very small screen, sometimes we don't know from where we are reading that information. So here we don't see the website in which we are. We have to look closely to the top in order to see where the link is coming from. Maybe this is a link that our cousin sent to us, and we don't have the context that helps us identify this as information or misinformation. And I'm going to give you an example. This is how we could see these two contents in our smartphones, in our cell phones. One is a real news and the other one is a hoax. And they are very similar. And the thing is that when you are reading this in your cell phone without the context, without having the context, it is hard to distinguish what's what. And also, there is something here too. Sometimes we don't even click the link or receive the link. Sometimes we get a screenshot. We don't know where this is coming from, the context, the, the date. Sometimes we are receiving videos. Sometimes we are receiving audios. This is what we are facing when we are talking about misinformation. There are several reasons uh, that explain that misinformation or that hoax creation. One is money, the other one is ideology, and the third one is an, something that is not quite well explained and it's more involved about being evil just for being evil. For example, the, when the, uh, we started receiving a message saying that water is not drinking water in Dana, uh, this is not helping anyone. It's just being evil because of, without any other reason. And uh, when we are working on uh, uh, on uh, fighting against misinformation, there are a lot of political reasons, and there are many uh, news related, fake news related to migration, and many hoax related uh, to gender. We also see a lot of hoax related to science, uh, food, pseudoscience, health, healthcare, and then scams. Scams may be the thing which is most interesting to you in CyberCamp. I brought some examples to you, but first I want to show you a video in which I look quite, quite funny and in which I give you a couple of uh, advices in order for you to distinguish what's misinformation. And please pay attention because we are, I'm going to ask you about this later. So here, this is guidelines for you not to be tricked. First rule, if you're not sure about the information being real, do not share it. You are also responsible of this. So remember one thing, you can always consult the experts. There are two basic reasons why fake news are published, because they, they make some money. In, for every click, there is someone winning, uh, earning money, or due to an ideology in favor of some thinking. Six rules. First, who is publishing it? Okay, it is not the best moment of journalism, but have you ever heard of that news media? Or do you know it and you are not sure about it? You can maybe see if all the media are always publishing that news. The uh, classified papers of the 23F came to light, the king organized the coup d'etat. Wow! Do you really think that no other newspaper was going to publish news on this coup d'etat? Do you know why? Because it's a hoax. Rule number two, never stop at the header, at the headline, because it was a copy-paste from Eva Sagasta's blog. Third rule, if your friend, cousin, or mother sends you a weird news, such as the PP says that 
the, uh, li the minimum age to have sexual relationship is 25 years old. It is a hoax, but people who publish it say that it was just humor. So go to the home page of that website. Are the news weird? Are they funny? Maybe then you can see that it is fake news. Most of satirical news don't say that they are publishing funny news. And then on the bottom of the page, in the disclaimer, you have that. Why do they call it uh, a sense of humor when they just want clicks? for rule, the false quotes, there is any publication on of Pablo Iglesias saying Gora Eta. False quotes do not exist, so two basic things that can be used as a rule. If they do not include the source and if they do not have a date, do not trust them. Rule number five, false alerts. The lemons with clay, oh, Mercadona problems, through WhatsApp, all of them are hoaxes. The police and civil guard account stop hoaxes, help us to know what is a hoax. Finally, ideology. Paris is burning, Paris is burning, and apparently it seems like it is on fire every day. Be careful with the recovery of past news that go in favor with a certain ideology. We can have real news that have incorporated false uh, nuances. So in Italy, for example, a man uh, raped a young male and then they added information such as he was a refugee. This is uh, These are the most complicated hoaxes. They require hours, time, sources and uh, journalist research. That is why we have created Bulo Maldito. That's the video where I'm uh, playing a little bit when I worked at the at El Objetivo, a TV program, and it was before we recorded it before Paris, um, Notre Dame's cathedral was burned down. Sorry, it froze. Can you help me? Ya se ha avisado que no era lo mismo lo de los ordenadores. As I was saying before, scams are more and more common. I brought some examples. This one was the beginning. I don't know if you have heard about the Bitcoin scam. This is the one we, the first that we discovered. It was a website that emulated CNN technology website appearance, and it said that the richest man in Spain, known as the Knight. I don't know if Amancio Ortega is known as uh, the knight or the gentleman. And this news said that uh, Amancio Ortega had invested on Bitcoin and he was rich due to it. One and a half years ago, it, this was just linked to the United States. That's why they used the appearance of CNN technology. But nowadays in Spain, this technique of Emulating websites has arrived in Spain. We have seen it in Buenafuente, Nadal. It has affected also people in the cinema world, like Pedro Almodóvar. Half of TV uh, presenters have been affected by this. The aesthetics is quite similar to the El Mundo website. It tells you how these people finally revealed their super secret to become millionaires, which is investing on Bitcoins. The problem of this is that in the end, it has real victims that write to us, to maldita.s, and they tell us about the process. They ask you to do an investment of 250 euros, and when you uh, tell them to that you want your money back, they install an application on your computer, and they start stealing your money, and there is no only one victim. Every 
every week some people write to us to say that they have been tricked. This is the most common at the economic level, but we have seen all the things. By the way, what I find more, more interesting is how the Bitcoin scam is spread. It is a, a cyber problem in all the media, but we have found it as advertisement on Facebook paid by companies which operate in Vietnam. And we have also found this in pop-ups. So me, but this, and the same idea is repeated. Uh, any celebrity has become millionaire thanks to this investment on Bitcoin. Of course, recently we've had, had many cases of fission which affect Correos, the brand Correos, we don't know why, the post office, or other brands such as Adidas. Sometimes they come in email format, sometimes in Instagram stories, sometimes through SMS. Actually, Spanish society is not well protected against this. I am going to set an example that moved me. A journalist colleague from Maldita believed this, and she works uh, um, trying to dismantle all that misinformation. So those are basic recommendations. Look at the email address, the origin of the SMS or the way it has reached you. Look at the website where it redirects you. Look at uh, notice if L's are not capital I's and all those things. If an institution is contacting you but is not um, introducing in your name is that suspicious and please check the sources before providing your data something that we may need to tell children in schools and look at how oh, people how far people have reached we have found this tweet Luis Enrique former coach former Spanish cone uh, is a uh, accused of raping and assassinating his own daughter who unfortunately uh, passed away uh, out of cancer some uh, months ago. Of course, this can do uh, emotional harm to the family of Luis Enrique. If you click on it, it downloads a virus on your computer. You know, to do the evil for the sake of it. I know that on many occasions people do not believe me when I say that many people uh, are fooled with those tricks. There are people who work on this on their daily lives and are aware of this, but some other people don't. I tend to use this in order to explain to journalists the importance of dismantling hoaxes, but I'm going to use it as well. On many many occasions informed citizens, those who work on this, the Twitter community and the cybersecurity community, we see our world from our privileged situation in economic or educational levels. And when you are not in that privileged situation and you start to listen to citizens' questions to the situations, our perspective of the world changes radically. When we go down to this conversation line of the rest of the citizenship, we realize the misinformation people have. We have opened a WhatsApp number in Maldita in order to receive some uh, of the hoaxes. And we find, we have found things such as a mosquito that stings you and gets you pregnant. And you might say, it is impossible for anyone to believe that. 
I can tell you they do. Probably it's only a minority within a society. Maybe this is the most exaggerated example I can set, but this is something that we have received as a consultation on several times, and that's why we had to uh, tell it was a hoax. Of course, it came from a satirical newspaper. I was telling you that we are working on WhatsApp because 36% of population consumes information through WhatsApp. So in WhatsApp there is a lot of misinformation. We have detected that in WhatsApp is the place that has more misinformation and it's the origin point. So if we catch it in WhatsApp, we can stop it before it spreads through to all the social media. There are thousands of people that send us news that are circulating through their through their networks and then we use the superpowers of our community because sometimes we talk to in FIBE or sometimes we talk to citizens which are expert in some fields and they do a very important task which is disseminating it obviously People can be fooled with scams and they do not know maldita.es. So I need that those people who believe us and who are in contact with us need to send through their social media the facts about misinformation. So in private chats, we need people to uh, tell others about the hoaxes that we find, because either we work all together or we won't win these bad guys. I do not want to read your conversations and I don't want you to read mine. I brought some examples because maybe on the cyber security side you know that you're not going to be fooled. However, let's talk about verification. In order to verify tweets, I'm going to ask you to participate. Do you know? What do you have to look at in order to know if a tweet is true or fake? Does somebody know the answer? In the handle? Okay, for example. Just tell me. In the handle and if it's verified. Okay, what would, would you look at? The date. Indeed. For example, if a tweet has been sent before the person had a, a Twitter account, like this case of Rita Maestri, which was sent in 2010 and she created the account in 2014. Twitter is a place where you want to write a very long text and you can't due to the character's limit. I would always suspect of somebody sending me a screenshot of of a picture, such as the case of Pablo Iglesias. Some basic pieces of advice. Advanced search engine in Twitter. If you Google it, you will find this advanced search engine. You can search by word and by the handle of the person in order to know if they have deleted the tweet. Another thing, the date. Another thing, uh, counting characters, the maximum limit, 280, but if it's before November 2017, 140 characters is the, max, the maximum limit. Okay, let's think. Pablo Iglesias published this tweet with 400 with 400 retweets. So obviously in that period of time, somebody would have done another screenshot, right? There should be more screenshots about that tweet because that tweet was shocking. So obviously that tells you maybe it is fake. So observation, what catches your attention from this picture? It is too epic. The flag. Why the flag? Canta la legua, está bien, pero 
No es oh, un argumento I don't think that's a good reason to dismantle <laughs> this. <laughs> But I think somebody <laughs> said that it is quite bright, right? It is like the sun is the sunlight is hitting the black and the yellow black on the right side is quite different. The wind, right? If If the wind is that, is that strong to make the flag look like that, the people's hair would have been moving, right? Maybe you're too far away, but thanks to this screen, this huge screen, you can see the stick of the flag comes out from somebody's eye. It is impossible for this picture to be true. So before sharing anything, you need to observe. You need to take your time in order to observe the picture, in order to see if you detect something that tells you that picture is not real. Sometimes things are not what they look like, even if they are not alive. I see a picture of Prince William uh, taking the finger to journalists it, and I think hmm, there is something weird. Perspective in images are important. So what would I do? I would try to look for the context. How can you do a reverse search in Google? You go to Google, you type image and then you can search another link or you can upload your picture of that moment. Google is going to give you more pictures of that moment in order to give you some context or previous pictures that can be similar to that one. Sometimes the reverse search for images doesn't work and then you have to be like Sherlock Holmes. This is the forensic analysis of pictures. I don't know if you saw this picture of Pablo Iglesias hunting. It is a bit blurry, but we could all agree that He looks like Pablo Iglesias. We tried to do a reverse search of image and then we put on the, uh, we, we took our tools of detective and we used that link, the forensic analysis. There is something that you can do. If you use the saturation mode on pictures and move it to cold or, uh, or heat, you're going to see things which are different. If I saturate it to cold, hand, the face are blue. The uh, jacket has the same tone, more or less, same about time. If I saturate, a, if I do a heat saturation, I got the same. Okay, I'm going to do the same with Pablo Iglesias. And when I do that, the hand and the, and the, and the face have a different color. Can you see? That means that somebody copied pasted the face of Pablo Iglesias in this picture. Maybe you might be thinking, well, maybe his hand was colder. Okay. Since I have a very specialized team, they, dis they found the picture where they had taken the face from. It took us two days looking for related images in Google. I know you're not going to do that, but you need to suspect. If you suspect just a little bit, do not share it, because probably you're helping to disseminate a hoax. And let's go to a thing which is more complicated. I don't know if you remember this plane accident in Ethiopia where 157 people uh, crashed and with no survi um, survivors. Before this news was published in traditional newspapers, we started to receive this uh, video where you could see the Ethiopian plane. I'm going to play the video for you, and you're going to tell me what you see.
Y aquí, que, y aquí le doy. Y le doy. O sea, quiero ver este o sea, vídeo. Quiero ver este perdón. vídeo, perdón. Perdón, perdón. Bueno, pues os lo cuento bueno, pues yo. Os lo cuento yo. No pasa nada. No Ponme la presentación, por favor. Es un vídeo, es un vídeo en el que se ve, en el que se ve como un avión como de repente avión empieza de repente a hacer así, a hacer así y se estrella delante, se estrella de, un delante, de, un coche, delante de un coche. ¿vale? ¿vale? Pero en el vídeo, pero en el vídeo so se ven algunas cosas. So here in the video you are going to see different things that you need to pay attention to. I mean, this video is interesting because every time I show it, people say it to me, I think the plane is fake because before crashing, it started moving weirdly. I think the video is fake because the people in the car do not, are not shocked by having a plane crashing. And then I always ask the same question, but how many of you are aeronautic engineering engineers or experts in explosives, I mean, sometimes we want to, to, to pretend that we know more things than we do, but I only trust the things that I can see with my eyes. This is what we are going to notice here. Well, one of the things that you see on the video is that the plane has four engines, but since I know how many engines the Ethiopian plane has, uh, 737 only has two engines, so this is not the plane they are talking about. But let's see if maybe this belongs to another accident in Ethiopia. Another thing that you can notice on the video is that there are mountains around in the landscape and I have the coordinates of the exact point where the plane crashed. So if I search in Google, I see that there are mountains only on one side, so obviously this cannot be the video. And the third thing is that there is a lot of smoke. Uh, verifiers uh, do not judge about smoke because journalists do not know about many things, so we need to be sure. But I see some buildings in the background. Through Google Maps, I can see if there are buildings or not because I do have the coordinates of the plane crash. If I search, no, the, the, the point where the plane crashed was surrounded by fields, so no buildings. And then if I use Invid, which is a more professional search, I can see that Dan, that video belongs to a plane crash in Afghanistan in the year 2011. I told you this in a very fast way, but I have brought a game for you. Are you ready to play? Venga, esta ha sido Venga, fácil. Esta ha sido fácil. Es un cajú, me han dicho que ya se han hecho algunos, soy muy poco original para eso. Pero, pero como funciona bien, como funciona bien lo, usamos, lo usamos. I know you have already played Kahoot in Cybercamp. We are not very original, but it works pretty fine and we love it. Sí, sí, es el que sí, tenía sí, yo abierto ahí ya. Este cierra lo es este. Estáis en ello, ¿no? Estáis en ello, ¿no? Que lo que, ne que, lo que necesito es que lo pinchéis en la pantalla. En la pantalla. Ay, ay. Vale. Pues nada, pues tenéis que meter en kahoot.it. You have to enter kahoot.it. K-A-H-O-O-T. Dot it and you have to enter your name and that uh, and that pin number. Ahí 
Hay alguien que lo está intentando y todavía no lo haya conseguido. Is there anyone who's trying and didn't uh, manage to get in? Yes, okay. Ya, ya. Okay, can we start? Somebody who didn't get in? Creo que estamos. Gracias. Okay, thank you. I think we're ready. No. No. Shall I wait? Okay, I wait. Ya, ya. Is it okay? Okay, good. Venga. Let's start. Yo os lo voy a ir cantando un poco, eh, porque no sé cómo de grande o pequeña. So I will read. So is it true or is it a hoax? That's the question. Some of them are tricky. Okay, yeah, it's quite small. So. No I'm not an, Cuba a migrant. A Cuba belongs to Spain. Rocio Monasterio quotes. Is it real or not? I remind you that the video said one thing. Okay, good, good. The video I played before said that you need to look at the source and the date of politicians' quotes. Jack is winning. Don't know who you are, but you're winning. Okay, next question. A child is expelled from the school because he threatened a friend with Sauron's ring. Ah, well, sometimes pre uh, things might seem incredible, but that happened in the United States. It looks like news. Sometimes I always trick you. True or false? This Roger Torrent, the president of Catalonia, that says... Independence is a historical right, and you need to uh, kill this. Uh, you need to kill all the uh, nationalist Spanish people. It is a hoax, okay? That was a screenshot with the same number of favorites that we have seen on circulation for many years. True or hopes, Maroto registers himself in Vitoria before the elections. Me encanta. Me encanta. I love it. Qué poca fe tenéis en Maroto, he, hombre. Maroto es senador. He no is a senator. No se so he Victoria. didn't register bulo, himself no in Vitoria. It is a hoax done through broma. your uh, website called Crea tu propia broma. Create your de, own joke, de, which makes de, your news seem um, seem true. Ooh, Blanky is on the lead, but be careful. Nicolás Maduro, Nicolás Maduro said, kids are starving on purpose. That, that seems a uh, paper. Twelve people thought it is a true. No, it is a satirical newspaper from Uruguay. Lucky, you're on the lead yet. Muy rápido ahora. Muy rápido ahora. You need to be fast. So, true or false, I smoked joints and tried no drugs, but I haven't Rafael sniffed Armando, uh, cocaine. 1987. ¿verdad? True or false? Obulo. Bueno, bueno. Habéis aprendido. Habéis aprendido. Okay, you learned. 14 of you learned. 17. I told you where he said it, and I gave you the date. So I was giving you some information. Blacky. I'm sorry. Bea is winning. Come on, Bea. So real question, a real image or not? I look at the. Uh, Look at the sentence. 
Bien. Yes. No es un montaje. It is Una not cosa es que fake. La Maybe the perspective no te la pero la is foto giving es you a misinformation, but the picture is real. Bueno, R. Benedi va. Okay, R. Benedi, okay, you're on the lead. Ese. You're on <laughs> fire. Okay, montaje. so real image or fake? Fijaos bien en Look la at the foto. picture. Yo sé que todos esta I know Cada that you Argentina, have all seen this image. Look at the picture. Inigo Rejón, Manuela Inigo Rejón Carmena, and campaña. Manuela Carmena, the mano. kiss on the campaign, that hand. Montaje, yeah, so it is fake. 12 people video. thought it was Por real, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> Me parece enternecedor. L, L. 5,000 points. Está ahora okay, mucho, the eh, ranking is moving very fast. Imagen real o montaje? Real, real image or uh, fake. La reina de Inglaterra, cual the del Queen of England, looking Trump, at Trump, Donald Trump, Trump through the window. Nos pasa como con la imagen de la estelada. Hay imágenes que son yeah. demasiado buenas. There are pictures that are too good to be true. Mad Maid, nos queda so, uno. So, there is only Pero one nulo. question remaining. This is the last one. Toda, eh? So they Pone set a radar, not from the DDT, and the money goes to the one of the um, accounts of the mayor. I see you. I see you're hesitating, hesitating right now. Yeah, it is correct, my friends. It is a real news. So let's see who won. Eras tercero, si te has venido super arriba, ha molado, pero no. Let's see. You're only the third one. Madmaid, ¿quién es? Who's Madmaid? Come here on this stage. Sí. <laughs> And he's saying, oh, no, no. I'm gonna give you this super bag from Maldita. Un aplauso, un aplauso. for her. I brought something for the rest of you. <laughs> a los demás os he traído demás unas, he traído unas I brought you some stickers. Antes de acabar, que me quedan But before minutos, finishing, I just have four minutes left, and I'm ah, gonna make the best bueno, of my time. Si este well, wait, wait a second. Así, así. <laughs> me lo, algo me lo, sospechaba. Algo sospechaba. Yeah, I was suspicious. Y bueno, siguiendo. Siguiendo. Muchas de las Muchas cosas que... Many of the que things I was telling you about reverse search of images, in VX and so on, I'm sure you're gonna forget it the moment you leave this room because your lives are very complicated, you didn't take any notes, and I understand this is not easy. However, in maldita.es we have a, a toolkit, so everything that I have shared with you You, some things are more complicated than others, can be found on the toolkit if you access maldita.es. But not only that, something that happens to us quite frequently is that you are surfing the web and on many occasions many you don't know many of the media that you find. So we have created an extension where we don't tell you if a website is completely fake, but we can tell you how many misinformations we have refuted from that website. And according to that, you can create your own opinion on how reliable that website is. But we went far beyond. I was telling you that we are consuming more misinformation and we are more sensitive to it because prime we consume it primarily on our smartphone and we cannot see the context our engineering has developed an app which is similar to the extension that i was mentioning before. So if that website publishes misinformation, the app, once you are entering that website, will tell you, uh, will warn you about this. You can also filter by subject, because maybe you want to know more about hoaxes on immigration, health, and so on. So you can do it in this app.
So this is what I want to tell you. I told, I have said, I brought stickers with pieces of advice and some Pac-Man that we have created with some games in order to learn about misinformation. And if after this hour where I have, I haven't stopped talking, you want to remember something, you have to retain this. Stop, think, verify, and before sharing anything, take 10 seconds to think about it, because in that period of time, you may be able to assess if it is fake or not. If you are not sure about something, do not share it. That's the best piece of advice that I can give you. And that's all, my folks. I don't know how to do the sticker thing. Do you have any questions before she leaves? I have tried to make you participate. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate you for this wonderful presentation. I, uh, I know that you do a wonderful job. It is a very hard work what you do in Maldita, but I wanted to ask you, have you ever had any case? Well, I guess that you verify it thoroughly before publishing that something is a hoax, but have you ever had the case where you had published, uh, you had to rectify, I mean, you said something was a hoax and in the end it wasn't? In Maldito Bulo, no, because the methodology is very uh, careful. It consists of we identify what we have to refute through the consultations that we receive, and then we assess if we are going to refute it depending on the virality and the dangerosity. And then if we think we're going to assess it, the journalist is in charge of writing about uh, to do that job. And then this is sent to the whole team of Maldita. Everyone has to question his job. And then we have six people who work in Maldita and four who work for all the media who have a voting and veto right and they have to uh, vote saying palante. So go ahead in order for that to be published. So in the end, there are so, so many people who review that task, that job, that we um, we are sure that it's true. In Maldito Dato, it's true that we have had to rectify because we, in that case, we have to verify quotes by politicians. And sometimes it takes us a very long time to be able to speak to politicians. But when we have to publish that, we write on the headline, correction, and then we explain what we have changed. In order to provide transparency, because credibility is based on that. And I guess that it is very important to the timing in order to refute hoaxes. Do you have any deadline, like uh, there is a hoax published and then you say you have to refute it in six hours or in 10 hours? Oh, no, I mean, you uh, refute hoax once you have all the information. I mean, I had to uh, speak with my sources, I have to contrast information and so on. But the average time is 14 hours. And 14 hours, it's not bad at all. Well, good afternoon. In the first place, I would like to congratulate you because I love to hear presentation. Well, this is a little bit controversial, but I listened to the radio the other day and I heard how a picture was manipulated. I think it was um, a picture of a child that I had drawn in Syria, I don't know if you've seen this picture, but and 
The thing is that the, the kid, the child had died, that, that was not true, but the thing is that the picture had been manipulated in order to change the position of the child so that it was more shocking. I don't know if you remember that picture, that photo. I don't know if there are pictures in which um, you could see how journalists were placing the child next to the coastline so that the image was more shocking. And in the radio program, they were saying that it is so hard to uh, impact people right now that they wanted to draw attention on the conflict in Syria, and they wanted people to get alarmed. And this is why they, they, they created up this image specifically. It was a very powerful picture, of course. Yeah, and they did that in order to reach the audience, because if they had taken a picture on a different position, it wouldn't have been so impactful. It is true that this picture changed the political reaction, at least in Spain. The political speech changed completely. For example, the speeches of the Partido Popular, Popular Party, changed. And I was working on Madrid Hemeroteca back then, and I did a video, a video on that. So, however, as a journalist, I don't think this should be done. But I don't think that what happened in Spain with the 11th of March shouldn't happen either, which is deleting body parts that appeared on the images that were there. And the only media that published the body parts of the victims of the 11th of March was El País. The rest of the media deleted these or put the headlines up on top in order to hide that. I mean, I think that we don't have to do these things. I think that credibility of media is at stake. And if you, I mean, that picture was very powerful. That image that you are describing was very powerful. And we all know that children are dying in the Mediterranean Sea, and this image was very powerful. But I think that from the journalistic point of view, that shouldn't be done. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions? <laughs> Hasta luego.